Hi, my name is Prince Uchuka. Uh, welcome to this quick video. Here, I want to show you the most powerful sales funnel in the world, arguably, that you can use to sell your digital products. And this is going to be incredibly useful for affiliates, uh, digital product owners, product creators, uh, people who are looking to you know, get a lot of people to attend their digital events. All right, so let's dive in. Okay, so uh, two rules, actually. Um, pay attention to every single thing I'm going to say here because uh, in this very quick video, I'm going to be compressing hours of knowledge into a few minutes. So, you know, every single you know, slide in this short presentation is going to be very important. Rule number two, don't forget the first rule. <laughs> All right. All right. So the first most important thing about this sales funnel is going to be your lead source, right? Because the kind of leads that you generate so this special kind of sales funnel is going to impact all the results, right? I'm going to show you the best source to generate leads for a webinar sales funnel. And that's because you want to think about it this way. The leads that are going to be coming into a webinar sales funnel have to be, uh, it has to be people who, are, who have high intent, right? Who are going to sit and watch a video that is... Uh, one hour long, sit at a digital event that is 45, to two, 45 minutes to two hours long, it means that they should be people who already have exhibited a behavior that is akin to you know, being open to watching long-form content. And where can you find those people? YouTube, right? YouTube is where you have the highest proportion of people on the internet that are open to watching long-form content. I mean, if you're running YouTube ads, you're literally putting your ads in front of people who are already watching long videos on YouTube, right? I'm not, I'm not talking about shorts this time. People who are already on the YouTube um, video feed watching videos that are 30, 20, 50 minutes long, right? And also Google search, right? The only time people are going to see your Google search ad is, uh, your Google search text ad is when they are searching for um, keywords that are related to, you know, the stuff that you're selling. So it means they are in a stage in their journey where, they are very aware of your product, what it stands for. They're curious. So they have a very high intent. That's why I consider Google and uh, Google search and YouTube to be one of the best sources for you know, high quality leads that have high intent, are uh, open to consuming long form content. All right. So second thing that is most important with this sort of sales funnel is going to be your funnel, right? Quickly, I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up so you don't mess it up. All right, next. The opt-in page. So when people see the ads on all of these platforms, say Google search, YouTube, the next thing that should happen once they click the call to action button should be that they get to an opt-in page, right? And because, uh, you know, you don't want to go away from the behavior that these leads are already used to. Right? For example, a lead that came in from YouTube, it means that this person is very open to watching videos. They love to consume their information in the form of videos. So, hey, you take advantage of that piece of information. So that means the best way to deliver information to that kind of person on your landing page should be a video because they already, they've already shown you that they're the kind of people who like to watch videos. So uh, in my experience, the best way to do this is to have an opt-in page that is structured to just have very little text and then the bulk of the information that you want to share with them on that opt-in page should be in form of a video, right? They love to watch instead of read longer text, okay? And now, what should this video say? This video should just basically tell them what to expect and explain the next step. Tell them exactly what you want them to do. If they're supposed to click a button, describe exactly where that button is. Uh, let them know what to expect, what's going to happen after they click the button. So, you know, it it, it opens up um, it opens up a, a, a very strong connection with your leads. They know exactly what to do, right? And from then on, you're sending them to a thank you page or straight to um, uh, your WhatsApp or, you know, they're automatically subscribed to an email sequence. Now, with your WhatsApp, what you should essentially be doing if they're coming to a WhatsApp or joining an email sequence is you want to give them details about the date and the time of the webinar, right? Because, like I was trying to explain earlier, the webinar funnel is going to be the best form, or the best type of funnel for this sort of needs, right? So you want to give them the date and time 
of the webinar, right? I'm going to go deeper to, you know, let you know exactly how to put together this sort of sequence. Now, uh, what some of the most popular things that people do is to just sort of, you know, put out follow-up sequences, uh, follow-up sequence that's just going to keep on hammering about, um, you know, how many hours or how many days away that the webinar is. But uh, in my experience, to get the best show-up rates for your webinars, one of the best things that you can use to write your follow-up sequence is stories, right? You want to tell stories. And here's a very simple way that you can do this, right? So get together the most jarring testimonials for your product, right? That your product has garnered in the past, right? Write them out in the form of stories, and those can be very good testimonials. And I'll show you exactly, I'll show you a real example of how I've been able to do this, right? So that takes me to the third most important step. It's going to be the follow-up sequence, because if you get all these high-quality leads and you're not able to put together a follow-up sequence when you invite them to the webinar, it's all going to be from nothing, right? So you don't want to drop the ball at this stage, okay? So here's exactly, or uh, you know, an idea of what your follow-up sequence should look like. So here, I quickly wrote this follow-up sequence to you know, follow up with uh, a lead for a webinar. And here's an example of me using a testimonial uh, to tell a story, to invite people to a webinar, all right? So I say, I met a young man in October last year, depressed and sad. He didn't know what to do with his life because he had X problem, and here you put the problem that your product solves. We got talking, and I introduced him to Y solution, right? Which is going to be the idea of your product. He called me last month and told me that he had, here you insert the testimonial. He had gone from A to B. He had made over this amount of money using your product. He had solved this problem using your product. You know, you can continue. I'll be inviting him to this special event so he can tell you exactly how you went from A to B. So what happens with this form of stories is that your lead begins to see themselves in this story, right? It becomes more real to them and it picks that curiosity. Because now I've said I'm going to be inviting him to this special event so he can tell you exactly how you went from A to B. And what I'm going to do here actually is just insert a video testimonial of this particular person who gave me this testimonial in the webinar. And it does the trick. And of course, you don't fail to include the date, time, and the venue, you know, the link of the webinar of the digital event, right? And you also want to follow up very frequently enough that people do not forget, right? So you get a form of mental commitment. You get their mental commitment into, you know, to your product, to your webinar, to your event. And that's why you need to follow up as frequently as possible, right? If the webinar is three days away, you need to, you know, you need to follow up, you know, at the, uh, when it's three days away, when it's two days away, when it's one day away, following up, when the event is 12 hours away, six hours away, three hours, one hour, 30 minutes, even when the event goes live, you're supposed to see follow up. Now, even when the event has started, say 10, 20 minutes into the webinar, right, another sequence, another email, another, you know, WhatsApp broadcast, you still go out and say, hey, you're running late, you're about to miss this. So that sort of persistent follow-up is what's going to help you get as much people as possible to your event, right? So remember, every step of this funnel is going to be very important. I'm going to find out in the next slide. Because if you don't get enough people into the webinar, it's going to affect the possible number of conversions that you, know, you could have gotten from that uh, webinar event. Now, here's a reality check, right? So you get a thousand leads, right? Generated, you know, on a particular date. There's, go there's, you know, there's actually an industry average of the total number of people that can join your webinar, right? So historically, and judging from the number of people who have, I've seen and learned from doing webinars, I see that there is always a 22 to 30% show up rate for most webinars, right? The sweet spot's around 25%, right? But if you're hitting anywhere between 22 to 30%, you're, you know, you're killing it, basically. It means your follow-up sequence is doing a great job, right? But if it's below that number, something needs to give. It means 
uh, your follow-up sequence needs to be better. Uh, you know, maybe maybe your emails or your messages are not delivering. Maybe the stories are not uh, they're not great. Uh, they don't inspire enough curiosity. They don't make people want to come check out the event, right? So if you're not get if you're getting twenty to thirty percent, that's great. Don't beat yourself up, right? Don't expect a fifty percent show up rate or hundred percent. I promise you, it's not going to happen, right? And your numbers, you know, you can achieve the you know conversion numbers you're looking for with this. Um, amount of uh, with this show up rate basically. So, if I generate a thousand leads on a Monday and I follow up using stories, ideally I should be expecting two twenty to three hundred leads on the live webinar. Get it? <laughs> All right, I know you do. All right, now to the webinar. Okay, now they've shown up at the webinar. So, um, the best webinars that I have seen, right, or have worked on myself in the past. Um, here's you know a quick uh, snapshot of you know how they are structured. Uh, in the first few minutes, the presenter you're supposed to introduce yourself and put forward the goal of the webinar. Let people know exactly why they are here, what they hope to achieve, the benefit for them, right? Because at the end of the day, everybody is selfish, so you want to feed into that, uh, want to feed their ego, want to tell them exactly what they are going to get out of investing their time in attending the webinar. Also, uh, to make sure that you're retaining people on the webinar, you don't want to have people coming to the webinar and dropping like flies. You want, you want them to be able to stay to the end of the webinar because uh, there's a huge chance, uh, you know, your pitch, your sales pitch is going to come at the end. So, ideally, you should mention a reward to be won or given at the end of the webinar. This is going to make people stay, right? You can give out a freebie. Uh, you can you can you can put together something that you're going to announce. It's going you know only those that stay to the end of the webinar will be able to you know enjoy, right? So three is tell a transformation story. It could be yours. It could be that of the product creator if you're an affiliate. Um, it could be um, any you know transformation story that the product you're trying to sell has done, right? And it's not enough to just tell the story. You also need to show proof. Of this transformation it could be in the form of videos, pictures, any way that you can tell the story of this transformation would be great. Make it convincing. Second is, uh, or fifth is, we want to include video testimonials, right? People don't want to be the first to try out your product, right? You want, uh, you want it to be believable that a number of people that have used this product have also gotten great results, and those people are, you know, you should reach out to the people who have used your product in the past. And they should be able to share uh, video testimonials with you, right? That sort of hype or praise the product, or you know, corroborates all the uh, marketing hype for the product, right? And all those video testimonials should be part of the webinar. Next thing, very important, is from when you transition to your pitch, right? Don't say the price of whatever it is you're trying to sell the product right off the bat. Don't just go. Bam, this product costs XYZ amount. It's going to fall flat, right? The best way that I've seen to successfully pitch, uh, you know, say the price of your product is to, uh, to build anticipation towards it, right? You should build sort of like a, an offer ladder, right? For example, if your product um, is maybe a, a digital product that is a training, you could break down the components of that product into different, um, uh, different, um, what do I call it now, sections, and hype each of those sections and put out the value of each of them, right? And when you now say the final price, you know, people now feel like they are making a saving from getting it at that price, right? So I'll go, you know, I'll go deeper into this and how to set up your offer ladder so it makes sense we hear your final price. Last and most important thing is always employ some form of urgency in your offer, right? It's not enough to say the product costs, you know, Y dollars, X naira, and leave it at that. You want to give people the reason to take action quickly, right? It's either you're saying the first 100 people or the first 10 people or social number of people who get it before this time are going to get an extra this, an extra that. I was going to get XYZ, you know, other things 
added to the product. So this is going to give people a reason to take action quickly. Okay. So um, once the webinar ends, your job doesn't end there, right? Follow up is a never-ending activity, right? So you also want to follow up with the leads even after the webinar, and you know reaffirm the urgency in your offer. But you also want to share more testimonials, right? Uh, you know, handle more objections that will come up after the webinar, right? So, the final um, step of this, uh, you know, sales funnel is performance, right? Performance, because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that uh, this whole setup is working for you. How do you know that it's working for you, right? So, these are some numbers that are benchmarks to sort of guide the optimizations, right? So, if you're selling a product that's under um, $70 or $40,000 there, um, you should not be generating leads for more than 40 cents. This will help you keep your net profit somewhere between 30 to 50 percent. Okay, and uh, if your webinar show up rate is anywhere between 22 to 30 percent, you're in a great place, right? And you can scale. And if your conversion rate, um, you know, within a week after the webinar, right, is anywhere between 15 to 30 percent, it means your webinar, your presentation, everything is well put together. Now. If at any point of this, you are not hitting any of these benchmarks, you know, it wouldn't be wise for you to scale, right? If you're not able to get um, leads at less than 40, 40 cents, right, you should be looking to optimize your advertising to make sure that you're able to generate leads less than that, right? So you can keep your um, you know, net profit anywhere between 30 to 50 percent. If your show up rate is not uh, up to 22 percent, it means you know, your follow-up sequence needs some work. If your conversion rate after the webinar is less than 15%, it means the webinar script, the delivery, the presentation needs some work. Now, if you're hitting all these numbers, all these benchmarks, it means your entire funnel is in a good space, a good place for you to scale. If you're hitting these milestones, then you can scale, okay? So I know uh, this video doesn't go deep enough to show you a lot of things, right? So um, if you want to learn more, of course, I know you do. I'm going to be hosting a live training on the 5th of May where I'm going to expose how you can set up your Google ads and run them to generate a ton of leads every single day, right? Um, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up your ad account to generate up to 30,000 leads per month profitably too. Right? I'm also going to show you the exact scripts that I've used to create webinars that convert you know, up to 20% within three hours. Crazy numbers, right? I'm also going to show you how to automate your webinars so you can live a life of freedom, right? Because you don't want to be running webinars every day, talking to people, right? Automations, uh, you know, they make your life easy and beautiful, right? So um, I'm going to send you a link to get access to the training. And if you're watching this video after the 5th of May, 2023, you're gonna have access to the replay of this video. See you inside.